Rose of Gloves here, and today we are going to be doing a chord analysis exercise to increase your ability to work with diatonic chord sets. Now, I didn't want to throw at you anything too crazy. This does take a little bit of intuition, and we'll talk about a lot of these topics later on, but it's really good for you to start this now. Um, and we're going to be doing a Roman numeral analysis and a chord symbol analysis. Roman numerals first. So it says, analyze the following. This is the classic song, Twinkie the Fat Star. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yeah, we could thank Hostess for this awesome song. So if I play it for you, check it out. Mozart uh, also wrote a really cool, I think it was a variation on a melody, variation on themes, whatever you call those. He wrote a really cool one of this that you should go look up and check out. But this is our just a simplistic version just for analysis purposes. So I'm going to play it for you, and then we're going to talk about how to analyze this because these chords aren't always... Um, in root position, they change a little bit. So I just want to point out a couple of things. First, let's talk about how to figure out. First, in order for us to do a Roman numeral analysis, analysis, that means that there has to be a one, a tonic, a root note, something the thing focuses on. So we have to figure out what that is, i.e. we have to figure out the key the song is in. So we say, oh, okay, well, they start with a C and they end with a C. So we're like, hmm, it sounds pretty C-ish to me. And if we look at the key signature, it's all natural. So we say, hmm, all natural is the key, this is the key signature of C major. And then we go ahead and we look at bum, 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 the first couple notes. So in the bass clef, we have C, G, E. And we say, oh, if we were to like push these all over on top of this C, we'd get a C major chord. So we could safely assume, well, we could pretty much say we're in C. So we're in the key of C major. So C is going to be our one chord. So you will want Roman numeral analysis usually appears at the bottom of the page. So we're going to be putting ours at the bottom. And what you do is you hit control G. This is what you use for figure base. We haven't, this is going to be talked about like way later down the line. Uh, but for now you just put down a capital one, a capital I for one in Roman numerals. So this is our one chord and we figured that out because this has some what are called inversions, and we haven't talked about those, but I have confidence that you'll be able to figure it out. So we say C, E, I mean C, G, E. And so we say, okay, this is the one chord. And then we, we look at this to determine our chords. So let's say, let's go over to the next chord. Let's do the first couple. So we say, okay, and it repeats. So this is all C major stuff. Over here, though, we get C, F, I mean, C-A-F-A. -A. So say C-F-A. And then what you do is, this is going to be kind of hard now. So if you can't quite figure this stuff out, just do the best you can. But if we take this C and move it up an octave, we notice we have a very nice looking triad. And we know the name of this one. This is F major. So this is actually F major. It is in an inverted position. Later on, we'll be like notating this. But for now, you can just put control G. And we say, ah, F major. Now we have to think. F major. F is what scale degree? So you think, okay, we have C. That's one. D, that's two. E, that's three. F is four. So we put down a four. Uh, and you'll get really, really fast at this. So we say, okay, and then we go to the next one, and we say, oh, this is another funny-looking one. So we say, hi, I know what to do. We have a B, so we hit a B. We have a G, so we put a G. Pick the G that's closest to your B. And then we have a D, so we hit a D. And pick the D that's closest, because we're ignoring inversions right now. We just want to know what chord it is. So we say we hit these. We say, hey, that's G major. And so we're going to think now F was four and G is one up. So this is the five chord. So we hit control G, V for five. I'm going real slow. Some of you might think this is really actually too fast. I don't know. But just so you see, 
some of the thinking processes to go through here. So you got to have the C major scale. Some people write them out up top. That's fine. Some people are like, oh, key of C major. And what they'll do is they'll, um, they'll type in C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And they'll write out their scale up top. It's a crutch, okay? So it works for now, but it's like the whole step, half step thing. It's a crutch. You'll never be able to run if you're always writing this at the top of your paper. I had students who couldn't finish their tests in time because they, they were doing this. Um, and while it sped them up in the moment, they also like stunk at making the scales. That's why they, they had to write that. They weren't good at making scales. So every now and then, maybe you're dealing with just a weird scale. Okay, that's fine. But remember, it's just a crutch. If you want to like be proficient at this, you should be thinking of the scales in your head. Get more comfortable with scales. So, okay. So we've written out one, four, five. And then I want to point this out. We're like, hey, look at this. This is different again. And we notice that it matches our first one. So it's C-E-G. And we say, oh, C-E-G. That's the one chord. So we have control G, control G, hello. And then we put down a one. And now we write out our chord symbols up top, right? So we put down control K for chord symbols. And then we go, even though it starts with a C. Then we, we say, what's the one? Well, we're in C major, so the one is C. And then we push our space bar to scoot over. And we say, what's the four? Or you can hit tab. That lets you scoot over by measures. So then we think, oh, what's the four? For C major, and we already found out it's F, so this is F major. And then we know the 5 is G, and the 1 is C. And then away you go. If there's minor, you write minor, all that sort of a thing. Okay? So you're going to see crazy stuff like this, but remember, this is what's going to... This outlines our harmony down here. So, yeah. And you can even do something. It's called a reduction. So sometimes things will be written super fancy. They'll have all these extra notes, like this over here has all these notes that don't necessarily contribute to the... Harmony, they are just colorful notes to make the piece more interesting. So what you can do is, and all this movement is unnecessary, you could just cram it all into one measure and make these all whole notes. So you could put just C major whole notes, F major whole notes, and it would accomplish the same harmony. So it's called a reduction, and it's used all the time in analysis to make things like digestible. Sometimes looking at a crazy page full of all these notes, it's not digestible. Okay, so we come on down here. And you're going to analyze these. Let's go over a chord run. I mean, a scale run. So here we have a scale run. I would like you to please notate what scale this is. So we say, oh, well, it's C major because we are in the C major scale, of course. And you'd say it like, you'd say it with just like that. And then I want you to notate like, oh, this is the, now the, the melodic ones aren't as important. I can't remember if I did the melodic ones or, or not, but I know I did the bass ones. Or it might be the opposite. Just a sec. Don't peek. Yeah, I just did the bass runs. Okay, so you can ignore the melodic ones, but this is still a C major run, so we could just put it down over here. And then we say, okay, C major. Hmm. And then we, we have to notate the scale degrees we start and stop on. And the reason I want you to do this is you begin to recognize patterns. And I'd actually really like you to go and analyze a lot of music, but once we cover sevenths and inversions, we'll really be in the position to begin to break down music a little more thoroughly. Right now, you're going to run into just a ton of stuff you don't know what to do when you see it. So this first one, I'm going to hit my uh, control G, and then I'm going to say, okay, it's a G. We're in a scale run, and we're going from G down here to the C, right? So I'd like you to notate from here to here, because this is the run. This C is part of the next chord. So while we arrive here, I'd like you to notate the stuff before. So we say, okay, this is a G. A G is the 5, so we'll put a 5 down. Space, space, space. And our last note is a D. And while I was doing this, I kept, I got my, tr I thought it was trouble clef. I was like, dang it, I can't believe I just wrote all that wrong stuff. I had to go back and redo it. But for you, you, you said, oh, this is a D. That's the two because C is the one. So C, D. So we put a, a minor two, right? Because in the key of C major, the second scale degree is minor. So we put a minor two. I'd like you to do that as an exercise in remembering your diatonic structures. And then that's it. And then you go and you on with your analysis. And there's one thing I'd like to point out down here. So we go through here and we say, hey, this is a, this is a five. You'll, you'll analyze it and you'll figure it out. And you'll be like, oh, this is a B, a G. And then we have a, a, a D hanging out. And then we say, oh, if we pick the D down here, we'd be like, oh, that's not the right one. Well, it is 
So it's a different inversion. We want the, the, the root position one so we can figure out what chord it is. So we say, oh, this is a G major chord. And so we say, well, okay, but this is an F up here. Some of you guys are probably wondering this. So you're like, what the heck? There's an F here and this is a... This is a... Uh, we can get into sevenths and stuff, but this is like a... I just wanted to point it out to make you aware that your chords... Your notes don't actually have to fit into the chord all the time. They can play, especially if they're playing a melodic role, they can have special functions with whatever your harmony is doing. So that's just something I wanted to point out. thought it was worth showing you like, hey, look, this doesn't match. It's not in the chord. Some of you guys are like going to be crazy about matching notes to the chord. And for that, I praise you because at the beginning, you want to be sort of a little bit rigid. And then later on, you can start just snapping everything in half, and you're not rigid anymore. You're just free as a bird. You know how to do every all the rules and everything. And the guidelines. They're called guidelines. Uh, if you have any questions about this, let me know. Subscribe. And have a blessed day.